One of the top business trends is energy transition, moving from fossil fuels to renewables. E3 Metals is extracting lithium in the heart of Canada's oil patch. CEO is Chris Dornbos. Chris, welcome to Kitco. Yeah, thank you for having me. Can you thumbnail E3 Metals? Yeah, E3 is a lithium uh, development tech uh, company here in Alberta. So we have two big pillars that we sort of are developing in parallel. We have a pretty large resource here in, in the province, uh, 7 million tons of lift and carbonate equivalent that we are developing towards commercial operations on our Clearwater project. We also have developed uh, a piece of extraction technology in the DLE space, um, an ion exchange process that is fundamental to that development, allowing us to extract the lithium from the brines we have here in Alberta. But also as a technology development company, we see there's a lot of um, potential ability for us to look at licensing that uh, internationally as well. So we sort of have two, two major strengths that we're developing here uh, at E3. Maybe you can do a comparison for us, like uh, how are some of the other ways that uh, lithium is uh, processed, or I should say mined, and how your extraction process compares? Yeah, so conventional lithium is processed in two major ways, uh, hard rock mining, uh, spodumene, and, um, and, now, and clay is coming up as well in terms of mining and uh, brine production generally in South America are the two major production methods. Uh, hard rock mining, generally you make a hard rock concentrate. Um, the majority of that right now is coming out of Australia. That's being shipped to China where they're uh, converting that spodumene concentrate into lithium hydroxide. Um, the other methodology is evaporation ponds. These are more what you're finding in South America where you're putting the brine from these uh, shallow aquifers onto the ground letting the, the sun evaporate off that, um, that brine and, and leaving the lithium behind after a series of steps. And then you can, that makes the lithium carbonate. And then that lithium carbonate is then transported uh, to another location for refining into a battery product as well. So that's the two major current producing sources of lithium today. And what would be the advantages of your process, Chris? So we've developed a process that is uh, chemical. It's a little bead in an ion exchange tank. So a water softener is an ion exchange system. And as the brine, and we're a brine process, um, as the brine flows over these beads, the lithium molecule sticks to them. And it's fundamental because what it means is that we can do lithium extraction in a much more environmentally sustainable way because everything stays within us in a pipe in a system. So we bring the brine out of the ground through pipe bring it to a processing facility where we extract the lithium out of the brine using our, our exchange material, ion exchange material. And then the brine, when it goes through, the, it comes out the bottom of this tank with the material in it, it has no more lithium in it. So then we just put the brine right back into the aquifer. So the residence time of the brine at surface is about an hour to an hour and a half. So it comes out, goes through the system and right back down. We take the lithium off this material and we form a lithium concentrated solution that's high purity lithium. And to give you a comparison to, to the hard rock mining world, they make a spodumene concentrate after mining it and crushing it, putting it through a flotation system, that, that's about six or 7% lithium. Um, our concentrate is 60 to 70% lithium. So 10 times higher concentrated. It's already in aqueous form. It doesn't need to be uh, roasted in sulfuric acid to create something that's in aqueous form to convert to hydroxide. So we can then take it directly through conventional processing steps that other processing companies use uh, to make a battery quality product at the back end. So when we say chemical, what we mean is that it is non-evaporative, non-mining, we can directly extract it. So the, the terminology you generally hear in the industry is direct lithium extraction or DLE. And we have um, an ion exchange process that falls under that larger umbrella. Is there any comparables uh, to uh, what you're doing in uh, industry or in uh, other industries? Yeah, in, in lithium extraction, there are a couple of companies that are also uh, advancing this around the same pace that E3 is. Um, not all of them have both the resource and the tech. And I think that this is what separates E3. Um, but Standard Lithium, Lake Resources, Vulcan, out there all advancing in a major way, uh, these direct extraction process uh, projects. Now you had a 2020 uh, preliminary economic assessment. What were the highlights, Chris? So it outlined about a $1.1 billion NPV uh, in U.S. Uh, dollars at, uh, at a cost basis of $14,000 per ton hydroxide. 
Um, keep in mind that right now we've seen hydroxide prices spike to, you know, at the present time in, in China, somewhere around $70,000 per ton and in Europe and in, in North America, a bit less than that. But, you know, this may not be the long-term selling price, but you're definitely seeing a robust uh, demand coming in as people have been predicting for some time. And that demand is outstripping supply just now marginally. Um, and that's why you're seeing these prices move. Um, so, but ours done at $14,000 per ton. So we have, I think the long-term selling price is probably in the 25 ish thousand dollars per ton. Um, and so for us, there's a lot of value still to be gained from that. But, um, one of the big pieces of our, of our cost base, we have a $600 million capital bill at an operating cost of $3,600 per ton of lithium hydroxide at battery grade produced. So the margin between that $3,600 and the selling price at 14 or even 25 is, is quite substantial. So a very short payback period. Um, and the operating cost is one of the lowest in the industry. So a bottom quartile for sure. Uh, now in 2020, uh, Livent uh, opted out of uh, E3 due to a resource and capital considerations back at that time. What's changed at Clearwater since then? And will you be partnering again? Yeah, it's uh, substantial changes have happened since Livent uh, withdrew. So we took the opportunity to bring all of that expertise that had been at Livent and had been at uh, some development facilities out in Ontario and bring them to Alberta. Um, and that was a coordinated um, with also a capital raise that we completed over the series of three raises, give us about $14.5 million dollars of capital, which enabled us to be able to do that as well. So the two came together um, and in February of last year, we opened up uh, our own facility to develop the technology ourselves, completely staffed by E3 personnel. And that has seen huge advances in the technology development. Within about four or five months, we stopped working on the R&D side of things. We put it to bed, we realized we had what we needed to take commercial. And we started working on the process design, which when you look at this from a risk perspective, the process is conventional ion exchange. So there's lots of analogies out there for using ion exchange water stuff. As I mentioned, half of uranium in the world is treated using ion exchange processing. So um, the equipment around it uh, is, is the lower risk part to the material that takes the lithium out itself. And so, you know, we've, we've advanced both now. In October last year, we developed a prototype that's now been running for the past eight months. Um, and that has seen huge advances in... Um, our ability to develop this towards a commercial product. Um, we are months away from um, moving to a pilot and uh, and, and constructing that. So we're, we're rapidly advancing uh, through the technology development uh, timeframe. I, I would say in the battery metal space, uh, the difference between 2020 and 2022 is quite stark. Um, now you're in the Canadian oil patch. Uh, we have any problem with labor and supplies due to the ramp up in oil prices, Chris? Yeah, you know, for the past five years, it's been a great environment to work in because the uh, oil prices meant that there was lots of uh, availability. Um, obviously, as the price come up, there is, um, you know, uh, supply shortages here and there and, and you know, bring that in with COVID as well. But we took some steps predicting this would happen. So we, we pre-purchased a bunch of equipment for our dr upcoming drill program. Um, uh, in terms of labor, you know, although oil has come back on in a big way, there is some tentativeness still we feel here in Calgary to ramping up big. I think, you know, there's conservativeness that's come into play to make sure that you don't overspend should oil come back down. And, and you know, I'm not gonna predict how long we're gonna be at these prices. Um, but I don't think it's a sustainable price in the long term either. So a lot of people out there right now trying to get uh, production turned back on, but um, we're not seeing a huge ramp up uh, as you might expect in terms of expiration work where all the, you know, the drill rigs and stuff start to get sucked away. So I think we're still in a very healthy environment. I think Alberta as a whole um, is looking for a diversification story. And one of the benefits to E3 and the government to industry, both sides, one of the big things you're seeing with E3 is that we operate here in Alberta like oil and gas, so we can use the same skill set. Um, and a lot of attraction has come uh, to us and, and to this industry that we're developing here in Alberta um, because it's, a, it's the future, right? We're, we're advancing Alberta towards the future of EVs and batteries and uh, the electrical revolution that's happening. And so there's a lot of excitement that brings um, people to the company. And we've got a great team here that we've, we've built around that as well. Now, Chris, you've received some grants. Uh, there was another big money announcement yesterday from the federal government. Uh, Reuters said Canada is to invest $2 billion 
on a mineral strategy for EV battery metal supply chain. Some industry people say that money is really not the issue. It's just the permitting. Um, look, I think that in any new industry, uh, having some funding available to advance it is critical. Um, you know, for on our side of things in, in the permitting, um, we've got uh, the Alberta government's been very supportive. You've seen Bill 82 get passed uh, in December, which provided regulatory oversight to Alberta Energy Regulator, who regulates oil and gas. And as I mentioned earlier, that we operate like an oil and gas company. So all of the regulations that we need um, are well documented, well outlined. You can go on the Alberta Energy Regulator's website and they're all actually there. Anyone in the public can read them and understand how E3 is going to now permit its project from drilling to pipeline to facilities, all clearly laid out. So, you know, that there's a, there's some legislative work that's still coming on that, but I think that it gives us a huge advantage because it's a very well-oiled machine uh, in terms of permitting uh, for projects just like this in Alberta. What's the milestones over the next 12 months, Chris? You know, today we announced uh, that we're uh, initiated a search and some, and we had put in a little bit of the initial results from that search um, for a manufacturing method to make our material. So in a commercial environment, we need to make uh, a lot of this material. We're going to do it on our project site uh, and we need pieces of equipment that can do that. So that's this search. The side benefit to that is that we can produce enough of it for our pilot plant that we plan to have operating uh, well within the next 12 months and, and likely hopefully by the end of this year, if everything goes well. And, you know, that, um, that development is critical to where we're going because then we can just use that material as we need to. And we have a method that, that is commercially viable for us to manufacture them in a commercial environment. So it's a huge step forward to us. It's probably only four to six months away before we have that uh, well in, in house. So we're very excited uh, about this move. It's a, it's a big milestone for us because as, I, as we mentioned in the announcement, the, the big hard heavy lifting that's done is not the pilot plant it's the material that we've developed and so um yeah very critical so you know the next 12 months we're going to see um, that development continue we're going to see us work towards uh construction of a pilot plant and then constructing that and then once the two come together operating that here in alberta so huge move for us on the technology side um and then in uh the resource development side we're going to be drilling some wells um, we've done a lot of geology work over the past little while um, on all already available information. So we're, we're advancing that understanding and that leads to resource upgrades. We're going to drill some wells to finalize that and hope for an MNI measured indicated upgrade uh, later this year. Uh, and then the final piece is the production of lithium hydroxide using conventional methods. So we've made it before in our facility, but we're looking at conventional flow sheet options to process it. So a commercially available piece of technology that we provide our concentrate to and it pumps out lithium hydroxide and then we can build that here for commercial. So we're testing a bunch of those options right now to see which one we like the best and that culminates all of that into a pre-feasibility study that we're pushing out. And, and that may be you know, a little bit after the next 12 months, but that is the ultimate goal of all of this work is to get that all summarized out to the market in a PFS, booking Alberta's first lithium reserve. So extremely exciting, but also some of the biggest milestones E3 has come up with are all slotted in the next four months. A huge progression for the company uh, in the future. Chris, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. He's Chris Dornbos, CEO of E3 Metals. My name is Michael McRae, and you're watching Kitco Mining. <laughs>